With relentless mortgage rates and stubbornly high home prices, the mortgage payment on the median priced home in the U.S. is now back up above the 2023 and 2024 levels for the first time since August. Affordability is getting worse for home buyers this fall. This does not bode well for home sales in the New Year's. It does not bode well for the prospects of consumers, investors, or the industry in general in 2025. This week, we saw maybe two signals that buyers are backing off in the face of these relentless mortgage rates. Uh, we measured a little acceleration in price cuts, which may have happened when buyers and sellers got disappointed by the cost of money after the election. Also, inventory declined for the week, but less than expected. Inventory has been compressing versus last year, but it expanded this week. Last year, we were near the top of mortgage rates in this moment. This year hasn't seemed like it's topped out yet. So these two signals are worth watching. And we've got the details here. But the data can change super quickly. And that's why at Altos Research, every week we track every home for sale in the country, all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in that data. And we make it available to you so that you can see the changes in the U.S. housing market immediately as they happen. I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the founder of Altos Research. And let's take a look at the data for the last week of November 2024. There are now 719,000 single family homes unsold on the market across the U.S. That's half a percent fewer than last week. Inventory is moving down for the season. There are just over 27% more homes unsold on the market than last year. That percentage increased from last week. This is a, a bit subtle way to look at the data, but uh, it, it implies that the inventory shrinking momentum we've had for a few months may have stopped. When we released the Housing Wire 2025 forecast paper earlier this month, we discussed how we assume continued inventory growth in 2025, but at a slower pace of appreciation than we saw this year. So we anticipate another 13% inventory growth next year. But we also assume that mortgage rates will moderate a little bit. And as of right now, mortgage rates are climbing. So as, it, as rates climb, inventory climbs. And so it's going to be a fascinating year. So in this chart, we have each year's inventory trend in a line. See how the uh, dark line separated from 2023 all year. 719,000 single family homes are unsold on the market right now. In the pre-pandemic years, it'd be normal to have 900,000 or a million homes unsold on the market at the end of November. So we're not at the old normal levels of inventory, those gray lines at the top of the chart. But in 2025, we're getting closer. So if affordability continues to worsen, that will accelerate the inventory buildup. 2020, the 2025 lines will trend higher and even closer to the old normal levels. There were 53,000 new listings unsold this week. That's 9% more unsold new listings than the same week a year ago. This level of new listings will lead to inventory growth uh, that I just referred to. When we add in the 7,800 new listing immediate sales, those are already in contract, that's 4.7% more sellers than a year ago. So in this chart, 5% more sellers than a year ago is right in the range we want to see. The red line is right at the level of the pre-pandemic sellers. And when I say want, want to see, I mean that I think it's healthy for the housing market to have slightly more sellers than we've had in recent years. Slightly more sellers means inventory grows a bit. That helps buyers have more selection. It keeps a lid on home price appreciation. This grows especially important as home prices have stayed elevated in 2024. So more supply helps curb that affordability crisis. So this is a holiday week, so we'll have a big dip in the new listings in the coming week, of course, and then very few through the end of the year. Uh, we'll be watching this trend line after January to see how many sellers are willing to test the waters. The takeaway with the new listings data is the hopefully level. If the market is going to grow in 2025, this data will need to stay 5 to 10% more sellers each week than we've had in recent years. That's the level it's at now, and we hopefully will see it after the new year. There were 56,000 new contracts pending last week, which is a pretty good clip for mid-November. 
Uh, that was 6% more new contracts started than a week ago. It's also 6% more than this a, a year ago. So we've been averaging about 56,000 new contracts each week for single family homes. We're looking here at the average pace of home sales. So this chart shows uh, uh, each a line for each of the last three years. And each week, homes take offers and go into the contract pending stage. The uh, homes that start contract now will mostly close in December and January. We recently heard NAR uh, announce the October sales and that grew over last year. And we can see that in this Altos data each week. We've been talking about it for, for a couple months now. So I'm using a four week average in this chart because it, it can the, the, the weekly noise can jump around a little bit depending on a lot of little variables. So if, for example, mortgage rates, higher mortgage rates cause sales to dip noticeably, then like what happened in the fourth quarter of each of the last two years, then I will make sure to highlight that. But because affordability is no showing no signs of improving, I'm watching closely each week for hits of declines in home purchase volume. So it's Thanksgiving week. So offers will be way down, of course, for the week, and, and they don't really pick up again until after January. The takeaway on home sales is that we are counting slightly more home sales transactions than last year, finally. I expect that growth to continue into the new year, but it's not a lot of growth. We're forecasting 4.2 million home sales in 2025, up from 4 million this year. And we'll see that trend in this chart each week. If the trend falls, we'll have to revise our forecast lower. So stay tuned for that. So in spite of the affordability crisis, we measured a little uptick in the price point for home purchases this week. The median price of the newly pending home sales was $385,000, which is a 1.3% increase from a week ago and is averaging 5% more than last year. Even in this world of 7% mortgage rates, with the highest mortgage payments ever, Home prices nationally have not dipped. As has been drew, true for a, a few months now, home prices are holding up better than I expected with demand so weak earlier this year, earlier in the year. So we're measuring here, what we're measuring here are, are the, the sales prices before the sale happens. This is the price point that people are buying. Asking prices are also up over last year. The median price of all the homes on the market this week is $429,900, which is 1% above last year. The median price of the new listings for the week came in at $397,000. So the price of the new listings has been averaging about 3% above last year. Now, this slightly positive home price appreciation is the same pattern we've been in for a while. 1% to 5% home price gains across the country, depending on how you measure home prices. Some markets are up more than that. Some are down. Uh, it also sets us up for a similar pattern in 2025. So it's hard to imagine scenarios next year where home prices rise dramatically, unless there's like some crisis which lowers mortgage rates into the fives, uh, low fives. In the housing wire forecast we published recently, we've highlighted a bunch of scenarios where home prices could fall nationally in 2025. We examine these scenarios and identify the data that you can watch to know if one of these home price correction scenarios is underway. So affordability is a legitimate reason to assume home prices could fall next year. And that's what we're watching for. That's why we do this work each week. The measures of home prices are looking at now. Some of the data also, though, looks into the future for price trends. So when we look there to the future, maybe we can see signals of prices softening with these real, recently elevated mortgage rates. The percent of homes on the market with price reductions ticked up this week to 39.1%. It seems likely to me that there are some sellers who didn't quite get the deal done in October. Now, after the election, mortgage rates have risen again, so these homes didn't get offers. If your house is listed on the market and the market cools after the election, you have two options. You can withdraw to try again in the spring, or you can cut your asking price. It looks like some folks are cutting their asking prices. 
In each of the last two years, this moment in late November was the peak of mortgage rates and, and the peak of price reductions. So it's the holidays. So, it, so homes that haven't had offers will also commonly be withdrawn from listing to try again after the new year. In the Altos data, we look back over 90 days to measure price cuts. So for example, most MLSs let you withdraw for 30 days and then relist as a new listing. In our data, we track those relists. We, we do a total days on market and we track the price cuts over as long as 90 days. So if a house is pulled now at Thanksgiving and relists in January at a lower price, we'll see that in January. We'll track it as a price reduction from now. Of course, right now, the homes that have been withdrawn are not listed and are not counted as price reductions. They're not for sale right now. So over the holidays, the percentage of the market with price cuts declines for the season. And, and so we see that normal yearly pattern and you can see that here in each line. So if you need to communicate about this market with buyers and sellers who may be surprised at what's happening, you should join us at Altos Research. Go to altosresearch.com, book a free consult with our team. We'll help you dive into your local market and start helping people understand the market today. Link below. Thank you.